Jacks. Long-term play for this week. And we are talking about Pandemica Spider-Man number one. This is like the J.J. Abrams book. Yes, J.J. Abrams, his son, Henry Abrams, co-written. Um, it was uh, certainly met with a lot of media fervor um, when this was announced. Um, and, you know, I think it was also met with some skepticism. Um, I think a lot of people thought that the popularity of this book would be based upon J.J. Abrams. Um, and we heard people say, the Boo Birds, they start saying things like, well, other Hollywood types have written a book. This won't, this won't work. This won't work. So as soon as my article was posted on comicbookinvest.com, if you're not familiar, I post the bolo list, not just on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. That's right. It's on LinkedIn. But I also post it on comicbookinvest.com with a back issue bolo section. Today's back issue bolo section focused on Venomized Hulk. But I immediately got a comment from another CBSI writer, ironically enough, um, kind of hating on this pick and um, comparing it to other Spider-Man number ones um, that have been released. Um, but the funny thing about that comparison is it's pretty clear he didn't read this book. Um, but I did. And did you guys read this book? Did any of you anticipate this being the type of story that it turned out to be? Because I didn't. My initial perception was the same as the writer who um, kind of negged the pick. Um, who my initial perception was, that's another Spider-Man number one. We've had Spider-Man number ones, right? We've done Miles Morales. We've done uh, the Todd McFarlane number one. You know, they're just calling it Spider-Man because it's not Amazing Spider-Man. And it's just this is J.J. Abrams story. All of the spec for this book surrounded uh, Cadaverous, right? Um, this new villain. Um, and people feel some sort of way about the villain spec, right? So this comment in th that immediately came onto the list said, well, you know, villain spec, that's short-lived. But Brian, didn't we talk about that last night on the Hot and Cold show? Yes. Villain spec is changing. Um, villain spec is hot right now. People are paying attention to it. Now, we're going to talk spoilers here, guys. This villain, right off the bat, kills one of the most important characters in the Marvel Universe. And we're talking Mary Jane, right off the bat. Mary Jane, done for. Um, now, if that doesn't get your attention, what else does a villain have to do within the first few pages of their inception, right? Um, but you know what? That's not even why I'm paying attention to this book. Um, that's not even what gets me about this book. I thought this was going to be, like most people probably, a Peter Parker story. I thought this was another, just J.J. Abrams' take on, J.J. Abrams wants to write Spider-Man, so he's writing Spider-Man. He's got that kind of clout. Or J.J. Abrams wants to write Spider-Man, um, or his kid wants to write Spider-Man, so he's using his clout to get his kid a, a, a Marvel writing job. That's the way I took it, right? And yeah, we've seen a lot of ce celebrities write um comics um my favorite is uh cm punk my favorite professional wrestler of all time writing tracks the destroyer it's a fun story um but that's not what i think this is i think there's some speculation here first off this to me checks all the boxes it was a fun read also full disclosure i don't really like spider-man that much I don't, i've said that before on this channel like he doesn't i don't resonate with spider-man my life i didn't grow up like spider-man um he just it's not my type of character but I enjoyed reading this book. Um, it was not the book I envisioned being the long-term play of the week. Bolo Nation, Simpleman's Comics Family, what book do you think I had penciled in as my long-term play of the week? Well, of course, G.I. Joe number one. Of course. Of course that's what I was going to – full plans to come on the mic and talk G.I. Joe number one. But I had my eye on Cadaverous. Had my eye on it. Really like that Delato 1 in 50, even though I think it might be recycled art. I'm not sure. But, you know, I'm a Delato guy. That's a 1 in 50. That's nice. I loved that uh, Perio Frankie's Comics. Yes, we're sponsored by Frankie's Comics. But this is why I think I'm proud of, like, the sponsorships that we have. Because, like, Nick at Slabbed Heroes does as good a work as any human being on this planet when it comes to shipping you comic books, when it comes to pressing your comic books, it comes to guaranteeing your 98s, I'm proud to represent Slab Heroes. 
let me tell you something about Kevin Fields. He creates the most unique variants, in my opinion, on the market. That's my opinion. Um, and I'm proud to represent his brand. Um, you know, from that all purple blank uh, Joker variant that you guys, I posted on Instagram, you guys loved it. Um, to something like this, having the foresight to get cadaverous on a cover. Um, something you don't see with any of like the regular releases. Um, so, and then a hot artist like Perio at that. And I think that book is still available on frankiescomics.com. Um, Nick from Slab Heroes, again, to shout him out again. You know what he was all over? That s middle cover on the top. That is a Chip Kid variant. Chip Kid, you may remember. That name sounds familiar, but maybe you're not exactly sure. He did all of those, I'll say, kind of terrible convergence cover B variants during the DC Convergence story. He's kind of like got that advertising style. But that variant cover was an FOC variant. A lot of stores miss that variant. I think it's going to be lower printed and tougher to get. But this issue also, it has that reader buzz. People were talking about it. I say follow the money. Marvel went J.J. Abrams. They put a huge marketing push behind this book. There's money behind it. We got the villain. Okay, new villain. You got a little spec play here. He kills a major beloved character. Okay, we've got a major death in this issue. Now how about we have the fact that Benji Parker takes over as Spider-Man in this issue. Peter quits after Mary Jane dies, retires as Spider-Man. Benji Parker takes over. He's given the suit. He takes over as Spider-Man. Who knew that this was going to be a completely different take on Spider-Man? Um, now, what is popping on the secondary market? You've probably already mentioned it in the comments by now, right? That first appearance of Benji Parker. Um, I'm feeling dyslexic. I don't remember if it's Spider-Man 59, Spider-Girl 59 or 95, but that book is going through the roof. It's going for like a hundred bucks, right? Uh, the funny thing is a lot of people don't read their comics. So that book is hot, and this is zero shade. Okay, I'm going to say this right now before any – I get comments, before people say anything. That book's hot because it was a key collector alert. Key collector put that alert out a day before the release of this book. They let everybody know, hey, this is the first appearance of this character. Um, I'm not hating on key collector. That key collector has an incredible effect on the market. Um, and I don't even necessarily think that that's a bad thing. Um, so it's not about them. But that's just a fact. That, that's how that happened. Um, but it's interesting. Our own Topher S., um, the man behind True First, he would actually call that appearance a True First. Maybe not a first full for all of you. You guys know how I feel. I hate that term, right? But if you're a first full guy, if you're a Hulk 181 guy, um, that Spider-Girl uh, – Appearance, that's a baby appearance. That's Benji as a baby. That's not Benji as what Benji is in this issue. So if you're in that like Hulk 181 category, um, this could be argued as Benji's first appearance. If you're going to tell me no because the market spoke already and it's the other book, then I'm going to tell you you're proving my point. Because the market contradicts itself based on where people have already spent their money. Because people are already spending big money on this book on the back issue because of the Key Collector release. Again, not on Key Collector, not their fault. They're trying to do their job. Um, but that's just reality. So that's how the market works. So I think there's going to be people, if this series takes off with the popularity I expect it to, who are going to make the claim that this is a, a first appearance of Benji Parker. At the very least, right? It's the first appearance of Benji Parker as Spider-Man. Um, and why is all this important? Right here. If you can see right over my left shoulder, um, that's the Into the Spider-Verse poster. We know there's more Spider-Verse movies coming. Now, I may, I'm sure Into the Spider-Verse number two is already in the works, right? But with the insane popularity of that movie and the way it affected the speculation market, how cool would it be 
to see another Spider-Man show up in that movie and be like, I'm your son. And Spider-Man have to deal with, wait, well, what? I have a son and he's Spider-Man? It's perfect, guys. That's perfect. So I feel like you've got multiple spec plays with this one book. Cadaverous, look how Donny Cates takes characters from other books, whether they're in continuity or not in continuity. Could Cadaverous show up in ASM at some point? Yeah, absolutely. Some other writer could be like, oh, this is a cool character. I'm going to write this character into my story. So you've got Cadaverous. You've got the Into the Spider-Verse possibility of Benji Parker, first Spider-Man. You've got the fact that there's a lot of Marvel financial marketing and media support behind this book. You've got some cool variants. You've got a unique store exclusive. Um, in my mind, all boxes checked. So this is not a book that I intended on coming on the mic and talking about. This is a book that caught me off guard that I thought would just be another Marvel number one to release. Um, I tell you what, another unique one out there is there's uh, there's also like a Shannon Mayer exclusive that's got Mary Jane on the cover that I could see some heat. But um, I really like this cadaverous variant myself. Um, you know, I think that this is one that caught me off guard. This is one I thought was created you know, from a marketing perspective for those store exclusive, for the oversaturation. No, I think this book has legs. I think this is a long-term winner. That's why I picked these long-term picks of the week because it may take a while for cover A to, to pop off, but this book has everything it takes and it can pop off in multiple different ways in multiple different times and it may take a couple years, but that's why this isn't the short-term pick of the week. This is the long-term pick of the week. I'm excited about this book, if you can't tell. Um, I was excited when somebody came at me about this pick because I knew I had all the ammo for this pick. Um, so let me know in the comment section, did you read this book? Did you buy this book? What variant covers did you like? Did you know that that Chip Kid variant was an FOC variant and it's actually pretty short printed compared to the other variants? Um what do you think of the Frankie's Comics variant? What do you think of Cadaverous? What do you think of Benji Parker as Spider-Man? Um, what's your feeling on first appearance? Are we looking at that Spider-Girl issue? Or should we be looking at uh, this as a real first appearance? Um, what's the comic politicians going to say? Um, let us know. Let's hear it in the comments. If you agree, disagree, anything in between, I'd love to hear it. But this is my long-term pick of the week. Spider-Man number one, J.J. and Henry a Abrams. I'm excited for issue two. When you talk about that first appearance, it reminds me of the whole John, John Kent debate that just happened, like, what, two years ago? That's my point. See, now, here's the funny thing is I'm going to get hammered for, like, almost insinuating that the baby appearance is not a first appearance. I think a first appearance is a first appearance. And there's no rule against babies. I interviewed Lee Weeks, who did the Jonathan Kent issue, right? And I asked him, I said, what's, I just blatantly asked him, I said, what's the first appearance of Jonathan Kent? You know what he did, Brian? He laughed at me. He goes, didn't we depict his birth? So in his mind, well, of course, that's his, that's his first appearance. But we, the market, we have these crazy rules that say baby appearances aren't first appearances. This isn't a first appearance. I have a first appearance. If you're going to argue that that spider girl um, one is a first appearance, and again, I haven't checked out that book. It's just amazing to me that people spend $100 without them checking that book. Yeah. But somebody who I really trust in Topher who has checked out that book has gone on record saying that that is a child appearance, that is a baby appearance. And if that's a first appearance, then there's no doubt that that Convergence book is the first appearance of Jonathan Kent, no doubt. And that Cable as a baby has to be a first appearance. That you cannot argue New Mutants 86 or 87 anymore. And if and again, that's why I make my entire point. I am not hoarding Hulk 180s. I am not manipulating the market. Um, it is, I don't even have a 180 or a 181 for full disclosure. Um, it is purely the fact that I, as somebody who has a position and opinion like we all deserve and have the right to have, um, 
share my opinion on this microphone. And my opinion is, as a community, we have a flawed set of rules around first appearances. And it gets illustrated perfectly in this release. So what are people going to do? Are, are everybody who spent that $100, Brian, on that Spider-Girl book, are they out 100 bucks? I bet they're not. I bet we're going to make that the first appearance, not this. And this will be called the first appearance as Benji as Spider-Man. Because we've got to create more than one first appearance and muddle the market again. That's what's going to happen. I don't have any problem calling it the first appearance, but I just... I think the value should lie where the character is being with being what they're supposed to be. Right. Like the first appearance, no problem. That's first appearance. But it's like, I don't know, especially when you say, when you put it like that as a baby, I'm like, why am I giving money for like, <laughs> but that's, this I look at it as like an actual baby. Someone that a baby's not going to provide me any value. It's a freaking baby. But then I have over here, the actual character that's doing what, what they're known for. That's where the value is going to lie. That's the first but that, appearance, but the value is going to lie what they're known for. But that's the FOMO nature of the market. Again, and that's why I brought up Key Collector because I'm trying to be full disclosure, full transparency. And again, shout out to Nick from Key Collector. I'm not – Nick will know that I'm not talking junk. But somebody, some follower of Key Collector is going to go jump and be like, oh, did you see Mr. Bolo was talking junk about Nick? Not the case. I'm just saying it's a, it's a natural course. Nick goes and tries to find the first appearance of this character. He finds it. He puts it out there. Everybody runs and spends $100 on this book because they're like, this is going to be the biggest thing since sliced bread. And they didn't read the book. And now when these questions get asked, instead of going, well, is that which book should we be more interested in? Now we're going to be affected by how much money was already spent. That's And that's again, that's not Nick's problem or Nick's fault. That's us as a market and how we can't, have these questions without we can't just base these questions purely on your logic that you just said because your logic doesn't include the fact that somebody already spent a hundred dollars on a book and then i'm going to get told that i'm trying to change the market or manipulate the market and and the market already spoke like the market can never be wrong like the market doesn't make mistakes like the market isn't filled with people who have a fomo disorder who, who are racing to get books as fast as they can. People want to beat up on Key Collector and say, like, well, they're trying to get news out as fast as they can, so they're making mistakes. Speculators are making mistakes because they're trying to acquire books as fast as they can without doing their due diligence. So, you know, it, that's the way the market goes. That's what ends up happening. But either way, I like this appearance. I don't hate that. By the way, I don't hate that Spider-Girl book. I like that Spider-Girl book. I think it has value. It just perfectly works into this conversation that we've been having about first appearances on this channel. Either way, I think whether this book gets a first appearance of Benji or it's just the first appearance of him as Spider-Man, doesn't matter to me. Like I said, you need five or six good reasons why this book could be solid, and I think this is the best one. The fact that I think that that character is made for Into the Spider-Verse would be great there. And uh, who better than J.J. Abrams? to be so cinematic with a story, right? I mean, that was that was excellent. I was pumped about that. You act like it was just him. His son was there too. Oh, yeah, right. Well, <laughs> you know, the truth is we really don't know whose story this was. Like I said, this could have been Henry Abrams' story and J.J.'s just the guy who has the clout to make it happen. Um, or it could be J.J. Abrams' story and he's trying to get his son over. We don't really know. I think it should be like the next issue should be like where he's got a CDL and he finds out, oh, this is my son. So then they drive all over the, the country with some Kenny Loggins music and then they go to this big arm wrestling tournament and then he turns his hat backwards and wins. That'd be just freaking <laughs> awesome. You are stuck in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> That's my youth, man. Living in Germany, all you did was watch movies because you had one channel on AFN, but... I, I know when Brian makes these references, we have some, like, 22-year-old who watched the channel. Yeah, what is he talking about? What the about? hell is he talking about? It's over the top, man. Look it up. Inst instantly, I know what you're talking yeah. about. But <laughs> somebody's sitting there like, what the hell is he talking yeah, about? Yeah, this guy's horrible. <laughs> <laughs>